3.3 million. That's the number of people infected with HIV in the world. It's also about the population of Canada. 2.5 million of those infected are children. And in 2009 alone, 370,000 children were newly infected with HIV, an incurable disease transmitted to child transmission during pregnancy, childbirth, and breastfeeding. This sort of transmission in the developed world has been virtually eliminated. Yet, in, in South Africa, there are 5.6 million HIV positive people where two thirds of those will not receive basic treatment. Not having access to drugs is not something we have much difficulty with here in Canada. We even take pills for the prevention of diseases, things like vitamins and antioxidants. Antioxidants are rich in our diet. We have them in our coffee, in our veggies, in our dark chocolate. Oxidants that these antioxidants fight against may harm the energy power plants of our cells, the mitochondria. <coughs> this damage to the mitochondria results in more oxidant production, more damage, with the vicious cycle continuing. This damage has been closely associated with aging and age-related conditions, such as hypertension, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. In my work, I have optimized a method to detect this damage caused by oxidants in the DNA of mitochondria and by how much. So how is this mitochondrial oxidative damage important in the HIV world? Well, HIV-infected patients have been shown to age earlier and suffer from age-related conditions earlier in life with the onset of cancer, for example, occurring 20 years earlier in the HIV-infected population. To make matters worse, it has been shown that anti-HIV drugs are very toxic to the mitochondria. The mechanisms, however, need further study, but since we see similarities between HIV-infected patients and aging, and oxidative stress in aging, we suspect that anti-HIV drugs increase the oxidant level in our cells. So using this method then, which detects damage in DNA, I plan on exposing cells grown in the laboratory to different concentrations and combinations of anti-HIV drugs. I hope to determine which drugs and in what combinations cause the most damage. This is important because some drugs are not toxic alone, but are in combination. And in underdeveloped areas like South Africa, where the most accessible option for treatment is the cheapest but the most toxic drug, it is important to see at least which is the safest alternative. Thank you.